Yo, man, if my music's bothering you, I can put on the headphones. No, no, no way. That's my song. <laughs> yeah, I like it too. No, I mean, that's really my song. I worked on the CD. You're kidding. What'd you do on it? Well, I, I worked with the singer on a tempo, and um, that's my drum loop right there. Well, for real? That's like my favorite part. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good, man. You got a hit on your hands. Not from your lips, man. Well, what's your name? Chad. Nice Chad to meet Harris. You. Nice to meet you, Miles Parker. Wait till I tell my friends I met you on the bus. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see your name on the credits. That's because it's not there. I put my heart and soul into this song, and um, they didn't give me a lick of credit. You are not going to get credit for anything anywhere. And let me tell you something else. You're never going to get another job in this industry when word gets around about this little violent streak of My yours. violent streak? Hey, you hit me first, man. Oh, uh, really? Well, who do you think's going to believe that, huh? They're going to believe me, a successful producer, or you, a loser? Get the hell out of here, man. Get the hell out of here. Get back to the street where you came from. Sounds like a tough break, man, but, uh, you know, I'm sure you get your credit on the next song. If there is one. What, are you serious? You got too much talent, you gotta stick with it. Thanks, man. Yeah. So where you headed? Harmony. Harmony? What's there for you? It's a good question. Sweetheart, what do you have in here, rocks? Stop complaining, TC, and just be happy we're getting a chance to get rid of all this old junk. <sighs> yeah, I bet you were the one that got Grace to change this year's fundraiser from a picnic to a flea market, just so you can unload our closets. For your information, the flea market was all Grace's idea. She wants this year's benefit to be special and different since it's Sam's first as police chief. Well, it's fine by me, as long as you're not giving away any of my favorite stuff. It's all for a good cause, honey. Look, there's Simone. That last shot you made today, Miguel, it was incredible. Thanks, Kay. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, kids. Hey. I just called the hospital. They said Charity's still sleeping. I know. I left word for them at the hospital to beat me the moment she wakes up. Were you guys just talking about Charity? I was just going to drop this stuff off and run over and see her. I'll go with you, Mrs. Bennett. But, Mom, what good is it going to do to be there if she's still sleeping? You know, Kay is right. And there's nothing that you or Miguel can do tonight for charity. And the longer that she sleeps, the better chance she has of getting her memory back. And that's what we're all praying for. Definitely. Besides, Grace, you can't leave. I can't wait to see what you dug out of your closets for the sale. Oh, my. Uh, this is Tabitha's box, actually. Oh. <laughs> well, still, you know, it was really nice of her to part with her stuff. Like, put it down here for now. Yeah. I think I'll stick with the items in this box. <clears throat> that is beautiful. Who donated that? Who else? Ivy Crane. <sighs>
see from the tape, I'm the one who tripped and bumped into the guy with the eggs. <laughs> I falsely accused you, Teresa, and I've come to apologize. Oh, that's great. You see, Teresa, you're not a menace after all. No. <laughs> no, and this gives me reason to believe you didn't cause any of those other accidents either. Oh, I didn't. It was wrong of me to accuse you, Teresa. <laughs> Thank God, it's finally over. <laughs> you can breathe, Teresa, for the first time in months. Thank you, Whitney. Oh, thank you, Ethan. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ethan, I'm, um... Why did you kiss me, Teresa? Sam, anybody home? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> you were a million miles away. What were you thinking of? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Shouldn't we start unpacking these boxes? Yeah. You're not donating this, are you? I love <laughs> you in this dress. You mean you loved me in this dress. I haven't worn it in years. It doesn't look good on me anymore. Besides, it really pales compared to Ivy's dresses. Mm, not with you, honey. You know, you get more and more beautiful every single uh, day. Every day. Mm -hmm. I thought this was our family's box. It must be another one of Tabitha's weird donations. Oh, this is our box, Kay. And I'll have you know that I was voted the coolest guy in my senior <laughs> class right. when I used to wear these. Coolest yeah, right. guy? <laughs> Dad, you didn't wear those in public. <laughs> you think that's bad? Look what my dad hey, 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 hey. Oh. <laughs> This was the hippest thing in my closet back in those days. <laughs> Tell me you're making this up. <laughs> you know what, sweetheart? I can't help it if you don't dig the scene. Ew. Right, Sammy? Let's show him something. Ow. I don't know. Maybe it's better I didn't meet you until after that phase, Sam. Did you have a girlfriend back then, Dad? I bet you had lots. You know... You know, that, that sign is crooked. I'm gonna go fix it. He is such a worker. <laughs> and don't you dare tell TC, but I am so glad for an excuse to get rid of some of his old things. He'd never part with them on his own. Why do you think I came up with this flea market idea? Well, I hid this because I don't want TC to see it. He'd probably take it back. Oh, his favorite. You would think he flew fighter pilot <laughs> missions in this jacket. He's so attached to it. He doesn't even fit it anymore. I bet he never even misses it. Who are you looking for? Well, I know it's silly, but I'm hoping my co-chair person might show up. Ivy Crane? The closest she is going to get to here is that dress of hers. I know, but wouldn't you just love to meet her once? I mean, she's one of the most famous women in the world. She lives right here in Harmony. Only time I've ever seen her is when she's handing over a check to the mayor at the annual carnival. Oh, well, that's plenty enough if you ask me. Don't you wonder what Ivy Crane is really like? I mean, I don't even know anyone who knows her. What is it you think I'm hiding, Julian? You tell me, Ivy. You just assume everyone is hiding something because that's the way you've always lived your life. Now I know I'm onto something. My wife always goes on the offensive when she feels threatened. Are you dining at home tonight? Because I'll take a tray in my room. Haven't you checked your appointment book lately, my dear? No, as a matter of fact. Without Therese, I can't keep my schedule straight at all. Well, so I see. Huh. I just thought that this was the year you were going to take a more active interest in the annual police department fundraiser. Well, when's the picnic? Well, the picnic is no more. They've replaced it to what they refer to as a flea market, if you can imagine. Apparently, it's the brainstorm of Chief Bennett's wife. <laughs> it's Trey Tacky, but it's this evening, and I have to put in an appearance. It's tonight? Yes, time flies when you're having fun. 
But I should have known. I mean, I'm the co-chair. Oh, for heaven's sake, why? It's not as if you're suddenly going to start mingling with the local rabble. Unless, of course, you're in the mood to exchange apple pie recipes with the other wives. What time does it start? <sighs> Unfortunately, very soon. Count your blessings, darling. No one's going to miss you at this tedious affair, least of all Grace Bennett and her hubby Sam, our chief of police. No one expected you to show up anyway. <laughs> They should take the lipstick off. I'm so sorry, Ethan. I don't know what got into Teresa just now. Oh, your daughter certainly is emotional, isn't she? <laughs> well, yes. She's always overreacted. You should see her on Christmas morning. <laughs> How could you have kissed Ethan like that? Oh, I couldn't help but when I just got so excited that Ethan finally realized I never meant to hurt him. Well, you better rein in your hormones. You cannot let Ethan know how you feel about him. You're just going to get your heart shattered all over again. I think I know why you kissed me, Teresa. You do? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? You kissed me because you got carried away that I finally realized you were never stalking me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. I'm just so glad you finally believed me. Uh, Teresa, I do. But I'm still not sure why all those accidents actually came about. Well, when... the paint was, was at the edge of the ladder when I bumped into it and it fell on you. And I dumped the tray of milkshakes on you because I got so flustered at seeing you after the episode with the paint. And I honestly thought the barbecue sauce was water. And as far as the heat lit in my rubbed all over your back, well, I thought it was body oil for the Harmony Hunt contest. And I slipped and hit that discharge button that caused all those fish to fall all over you at the cannery. Wow. I know. You really are accident prone around me. Oh, but I don't understand why I was the chosen one. I mean, there must be some reason I caused you to behave this way. I wish I could t tell you, but I, I can't. Well, Whitney, do you have any idea why she acted that way around me? No. No. <laughs> oh, what about you, Pilar? I really don't, don't know. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> this is one of life's mysteries. <laughs> Well, now that everything is settled, I'm sure Ethan needs to go, and I have to yeah. go, too. I promise I'd help out at the police department benefit. Teresa? Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, mm -hmm. Promise me that you will never throw yourself at Ethan again. You can't let your heart be broken anymore or risk hurting this family. I promise, Mama. I'll see you and Whitney both later. Hmm? Yes. We'll be there, Miss Lopez Fitzgerald. I just remembered why I went after you tonight in the first place. I can't find that report you typed up for me, Teresa. Well, it's in your laptop. Oh, I looked, but I couldn't find it. Oh, I use kind of a personal filing system. You wouldn't mind coming back to the house and helping me pull it up. Uh, we got to get to the fundraiser, Teresa. I promise it won't take long. It's really important. After everything I've done to you and how kind you've been to me, it's the least I can do, Ethan. Thanks. Well, let's go. Okay. It is like her brain flies out the window every time she looks at him. I better keep an eye on her. Hey, wait up! I'll take that as a compliment. Take it any way you want, Ivy. But dare I ask what you're up to this evening? Did Bill and Hillary invite you to Din Din? <laughs> I'm going to the police benefit with you, Julian. And all this trouble for the locals. What are you up to? Oh, I know. You're planning on charming the mayor into passing a law banishing me from Harmony. Oh, no. I already tried that. Unfortunately, I couldn't get such a law passed. I should hope not. I would so miss our idyllic, albeit platonic, life together. You have no idea what a colossal mistake you're making, dear. You're going to be bored to tears. No, I don't think so. Is 
Sammy. Hey. We've been tight since high school, right? <laughs> DC, if you're one of my bell bottoms, man, it's all you had to do is ask. <laughs> That's not what I was going to say. We know just about everything there is to know about each other, right? Yeah. And I've always stayed clear of certain parts of your life you never want to talk about, like Ivy Crane. Hey, wait a minute, okay, all right? Please, just hear me out. Ever since you moved back to hear the harmony with Grace, you have stayed clear of the cranes. You won't even go to the same functions that you think they're gonna be at, especially Ivy Crane. DC, I think you missed your calling, man. You should have been a spy. Sam, I wasn't looking for any information, but you gave it to me on just how you reacted right now. But don't worry about it, okay? I don't think anybody else picked up on it. Do you mind telling me why you're bringing this up now? Sammy, I never asked you about your past or about Ivy Crane. Just like you never asked me about certain things in my life. And I respect that. What's your point, TC? My point is, Sam, that you're the chief of police now. And you can't duck and hide from any public functions you want to go to or not go to. You're going to see the Cranes, Julian and Ivy. And all I'm saying is, I'm here for you, buddy. If you ever want to talk about, if you ever want to talk about anything, you know where to find me. Is the jewelry store donating anything today, Mrs. Bennett? Yeah, as far as I know, the table should be set up in a few minutes. I'm looking for the perfect outfit to wear when I go out with Miguel. Which would be when, Kay? Before or after Miguel goes back to sit at Charity's bedside? Do you have to be such a downer? I'm being a realist. Miguel would be back at the hospital right now if my mom hadn't convinced him to stay. And you know it. Wrong, Simone. He's here because he's already forgetting about Charity. He left her side to go to basketball practice, and now he's here with me. Us. The more time Miguel spends away from Charity, the weaker their connection will get. Which leaves me room to move in on him. You could at least try to look happy for me. It's just that if the impossible happens and you do get with Miguel, what does that leave me? What do you mean? You only want to spend time with Miguel then. I'll be a total third wheel. I thought you were going to help me find a guy to like. I will. So where is he? See, in this right here, this is the pool at the Harmony Country Club. I was a lifeguard there last summer. You live in Harmony, man? Nah, but I spent like every summer of my entire life there. So what about you? What, are you going to visit family? So it's a scrap of a newspaper from a place I never heard of. Big deal. Harmony's a small seaside town in the Northeast. Hey, look over here. Somebody's got your name on the corner. Well, who did that? You folks from Harmony originally? No, they said they were always from LA. Could mean something. You what? A piece of a newspaper from the other side of the country with my name on it? Yeah, just throw this mess away. Hey, hold on, Chad. I mean, you know, it could be important. I don't have any family. The truth is, I got no idea what I'm going to do in Harmony. Next stop, Harmony. I guess I'm about to find out. So this is Harmony. The Harmony bus station, anyway. <laughs> How soon to get you connecting bus? No, oh, man, it shouldn't be more than like 10 minutes. Well, anyway, man, it was, uh, it was nice to meet you. And uh, maybe I'll see you here next summer when I come back to Harmony. Yeah, well, uh, that'd be cool, but uh, I doubt it that I'll be here. Oh, yeah, right. You'll probably be like turning out hits and things in New York City, right? And then I could say I knew you back when. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man, but uh, sometimes things don't um, work out the way you want them to. Yeah, I, I still can't understand what brought you to Harmony. Maybe that makes two of us. <laughs> yeah, listen easy, man. All right, you too. Hey, good luck. Hey, right. hope you got a jacket. It's getting kind of nippy out there.
find you a boyfriend, Simone. Then we can double date. Where's this boyfriend coming from? There's no one around I'm even close to being interested in. Yet, Simone. The operative word is yet. For all you know, he could be right here tonight. I don't think I'll hold my breath. Thanks, TC. But I don't have anything to say about Ivy Crane. She and all the other Cranes are out of my life for good. Just so you know, I never said a word about you or Ivy to anyone. Not even Eve. But it's not the first secret I've kept from my wife. So I take it that Grace doesn't know anything. There's nothing for her to know. Not anymore. Look, I gotta get some more stuff out of the car. just walked in with her. Isn't she beautiful? She's very pretty. I feel so matronly around a woman like Ivy Crane. Grace, if we had the time or the money that that woman has to spend on herself, we could look every bit as chic and sophisticated. Anyway, I think we look pretty good. You better say you agree. Oh, of course, I agree, I agree. And do all your ogling fast, because I'm sure they'll just be here a few minutes and they'll take off. That's such a shame. You know, I bet Ivy and Julian Crane are just nice, normal people like everyone else in this town. Why don't you get to know them? I'm sure everyone's wondering just exactly what Madam Co-Chair Woman donated to the flea market. <laughs> don't worry, my pet. Pilar sent over some box of old rags that you had marked for the hospital thrift shop. Remind me to give Pilar a large bonus. Yeah, so make sure it's out of your own account. <sighs> now, I'm gonna rely on our usual signal. When you see me discreetly tap my watch, you will uh, use one of your gracious excuses and we'll get the hell out of this bloody awful event. Who are you looking for? Miguel. I was hoping I'd see you here. How's Charity? She still hasn't recognized me, but I'm hoping she will when she wakes up again. I'm sure she'll be all right. I'm praying for her. Thanks, Mama. I mean, if anyone has the inside track to God's ear, it's you. Mm -hmm. I wish it was so. Where's Teresa? Well, your sister and Whitney should be here soon. But now that Teresa doesn't work for Ivy Crane anymore, I have another prayer to add to my list. Well, what's that, Mama? That Teresa will finally get over her obsession with Ethan. My laptop's over there on the table. I'm gonna go up and get my briefcase. I'll be back in a minute. Sir, Ethan. Can you believe it, Whitney? I am actually inside the Crane Mansion without having to wear a disguise and hide who I really am in front of Ethan. And I owe it all to you. <laughs> Don't remind me. Come on, Whitney. I am trying to say thank you so very much for coming to my rescue. That surveillance tape showed Ethan that it wasn't my fault that all those eggs dropped on him. You are the best friend anyone could ever have. I just hope you learned your lesson, Teresa. I mean, you've been given a second chance now that Ethan realizes that you never stalked him. I know. So don't play with fire, okay? Because that's what Ethan is to you, you know. Fire. So go help him find his file and let's get out of here. Don't worry, Whitney. As of tonight, I am not going anywhere near Ethan. I am not getting burned by him ever again. You almost sound like you mean that. Well, of course I do. I almost caused a disaster for my entire family. Louise could have found out I was working for the Cranes. My mother could have lost her job. I've learned my lesson. Honest. Teresa the dreamer is no more. It's Teresa the realist now. I know Ethan's in love with Gwen. And I'll probably end up marrying her. Why set myself up for another fall? You talk a really good game, Teresa, but you cannot blame me for being just a little bit skeptical. I understand, Whitney, but you've got nothing to worry about. Hey, Hi. Whitney, I thought you might be interested in looking through this old photo album of my father's. Your father's photo album? Yes, it's full of old uh, tennis clippings and photos. I know tennis is your thing, so I thought it might interest you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Althea Gibson. <laughs> the first black woman to win Wimbledon. She is my idol. And it's inscribed to your father? I, I didn't even know Julian Crane was that interested in tennis. Oh, he was always serious about tennis in high school. Really? I mean, so was my dad. <laughs> Well, so far so good. And we've been together for a couple hours and no new accents. Could the dreaded cast be weighing off? <laughs> I think it has. <laughs> you look so different without that disguise yours, Teresa. Different good or, or different bad? Oh, definitely different good. You've got the most beautiful eyes. <laughs> Do you really think so, Ethan? Fire and Castle uh, Financial report by Crane Industries and an interview with Julian Crane about a police department benefit tonight. I can't really going to find anything in here that relates to me. I'd like to make a person-to-person -person call to Henry Norton, please. Collect. Tell him it's Chad. Yeah, I'll accept the charges. Chad, where are you? Harmony. I flew into Boston and then got a bus here. Oh, so you decided to uh, follow up on that scrap of newspaper after all, huh? Well, not much else to do after my ex-boss sicked his goons on me. I told you not to go back to that studio. Don't worry, I got the message this time. I'm definitely 86th out of the music business in L.A. But even so, man, I don't think I should have bothered to come out here. I mean, 3,000 miles for what? To, to freeze my butt off? Hey, you just got there. Doesn't matter. I can already tell you there's nothing here for me. I'm already almost busted. I mean, I ain't got enough to get back to L.A. or anywhere else. Oh, man, this is a waste. Hey, 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 give the town a chance. If you need a few bucks, I'll ship them to you. No way. I'm already into you and Boomer enough as it is. I'll pull my own weight from here on in, somehow. Well, that scrap of paper from the Harmony Herald with your name on it, it might mean you have some kind of connection to the town. Well, I picked up a copy of the paper today. It seems like there's a family of rich folks named Crane who run this town. <laughs> Some tells me I ain't got no relation to them. <sighs> Henry, look, I gotta go. All right, keep in touch. All right, all right, no doubt. It's a flea market. <laughs> Might as well check it out. Maybe I can find me a jacket. What do you think? Not unless you want to look like Jimi Hendrix. Come with me. Did you see a boy I might like yet? No, but Miguel's at the jewelry table. This is a golden opportunity. For what? You'll see. See anything you like? I'm just looking. Oh, this is so pretty. Looks like a Victorian engagement ring. It's nice. Any girl would be in heaven to get a ring like this. Yeah? Yeah. Um, excuse me, Simone. I was in the middle of a conversation with Miguel. You were in the middle of making a fool of yourself. You don't think for one second that you're going to make Miguel buy you that engagement ring, do you? You haven't even been on a real date with him. So, who says you can't skip a few steps? Pick up the Victorian engagement ring, Miguel. Pick it up and give it to Kay. You should be committed. He did it, Simone. He picked up the ring. Yes.
Well, this is it for the donations. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> well, I don't see any reason for us to stick around, Grace. Sam, we can't leave now. The cranes are here, and I am dying to meet Ivy. And you know her, don't you? Uh, know her? Yeah, from when you had to go to the mansion for your meeting with Julian Crane. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, what I wouldn't give for a formal introduction to Ivy Crane, you know, instead of just being a face in the crowd. Looks like you're about to get your wish, Grace. Chief. Uh, uh, yeah. Please, Chief Bennett and his lovely wife are the ones we can thank for this splendid turn. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, but I can't give me any credit. My wife is the one who did all the work. Uh, Grace, this is uh, Ivy Crane. <laughs> so, you're Sam's wife. Uh-oh. There's, there's nothing special about my eyes, Ethan. Are you kidding? Your eyes sparkle when you smile. You are very beautiful, Teresa. <laughs> I'm sure the boys in school are fighting over you. N not really. <laughs> well, there must be something wrong with the boys in this town. Um, don't you think you should, um, find that file for Ethan so we can get over to the flea market, Teresa? Oh, sorry, Whitney, that's my fault. So how do I call up that file? Well, it's no wonder you couldn't find it. I made a new directory for it. It's under the letters EC-TLF. Hey, what's that? Oh, um, it's my initials and your initials together. <laughs> You're right, I never would have found it. So why'd you name it that? It, that just kind of came to me, I guess. Okay. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Now all we have to do is print it out. Don't forget, Teresa, you can't fall back in love with him. I didn't mean to be so familiar, Chief Bennett. I only called your husband by his first name because he was so nice when he was at our house the other night. Well, I'm sure Sam doesn't mind. Do you, honey? Of course not. There's no reason why we all shouldn't be on a first name basis. Wonderful. I couldn't agree more. Don't you, Julian? Mm, certainly. By the way, those hats look much better on you two than they ever did on me. <laughs> I forgot I had this on. So I. <laughs> but thank you for your generous donations, Mrs. Ivy. Well, it's the very least I could do. Grace, I was very sorry to hear about the tragic fire at your sister's house in Castleton. How's your niece doing? It's slow going, but she's coming along. Thank you. I'm glad to hear it. Grace, I was wondering if you had some time, could you show me around? I should know where everything is, but I'm afraid I've been remiss as your co-chair. <laughs> no, not at all. I would love to give you a tour. Why don't we start in the other room? Hmm. Wonderful. I think this is going to be our biggest year ever. Pilar, hello. Mrs. Crane. Hi, Grace. Huh? Looks like a wonderful turnout. I was just telling Ivy it's our best yet. Mm. And thank you so much for your help tonight. Oh, you're welcome. Pilar, don't I recognize this cake? Yes, Mrs. Crane. That's the one you had your cook send over. Oh, and, and who baked all the rest? Well, Grace did most of the baking herself. Oh, well, how lovely that you still bake. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of watching you try to rope Miguel. I'm going home. No, not when I'm this close. He heard my message and he picked up the ring, but he hasn't bought it yet. I might need you to give him a little hint. All right, I'll stick around for a little while. Besides, I wouldn't want to miss my Prince Charming if he comes walking anymore. <clears throat> Now, you've got a copy of this report on your hard drive and another one on here. Okay. Do you want me to print it out for you? Well, I wouldn't want you to be late for that police department fundraiser. <laughs> it's no problem. Huh? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Teresa, our parents are waiting for us, remember? 
Yeah, it's fine, Teresa. I can print it out myself. I appreciate you taking all this time. No, I didn't mind at all. It's just too bad you can't work in this house anymore. Oh, wait a minute. I mean, now that we've sorted out that you were never stalking me, is there really any reason why you can't work for my family? <sighs> uh, we really have to go, Teresa. What's a picture of my father doing in the Crane family photo album? Oh, Mike, uh, Eve. Dr. Russell to you. Did Julia Crane just say something to you? Just apologize for bumping into me. Do me a favor, sweetheart. Stay as far away from that man as you most possibly can. Excuse me, ladies, I need to borrow my wife. I seem to have mixed up a couple of the boxes. Uh, can we excuse us, Ivy? Of course. <laughs> Surprised to see you here, Mrs. Crane. <laughs> Why, Pilar? After all, I am co-chair. I wanted to check things out. And I'm so glad I did, because I am enjoying myself immensely. I wouldn't think there'd be anything to interest you here. Oh, but you're so wrong. You can pick up some wonderful things at a sale like this. Sometimes people throw away their most valuable possessions by mistake. Trouble is coming. I need to put Miguel in a romantic mood. This should do the trick. Listen, darling. They're playing your song. It's one of Sam's favorite songs, too. Isn't it, honey? Uh, yes. <laughs> Give me your hand, Kay. Okay? 